Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We have the pleasure of having one of our team members here at Anovia joining us, Patrick Manley. And Patrick will be presenting on setting up assembly order bill of materials in Business Central. And as a reminder, we are recording this webinar and we will post it to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. You can find our library under our resources tab on our website at anovia.com. And we do encourage you to ask questions during our presentation. So please feel free to type them into the questions box on the webinar control panel, and we will answer them at the end of our session. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Patrick to kick off our presentation. Thank you, Angie, appreciate that. So as Angie was stating, today I'll be covering setting up assembly order bill of materials in Business Central. My name is Patrick Manley, and I'm an account consultant here at Inovia Consulting. I've been with the company a year now, and I started working ERP systems about nine years ago. I've been working with NAV for five years and BC for four years. I really like the BC platform and what it can offer companies in ways of producing, organizing, and tracking inventory. In this webinar, I will be covering assembly bomb setup at Business Central. The setup that I'll be covering is handled the same in NAV, so this will work in whatever system you're currently running at your business. But first, why are there different ways to set up bombs? It truly depends on how you want to track your inventory, sell your inventory, and ship your inventory. So what are the two ways I see companies use bombs? First is to assemble multiple items into a single sellable package. Second is to assemble multiple items into a display package so that it can be shipped to a customer typically in this case a retail store, to be resold as individual units. So the first way we will discuss is the most common way to set up a bill of materials. Examples of this would be a six pack of soda, a three pack of gum, or possibly even a holiday package that might contain a number of different items that are sold as a package deal for a specified amount of time prior to the holiday. So the reason for this sort of bomb, we want to assemble six items into a package that will be tracked in the system, sold and shipped as a single six pack unit. So what does the six pack of soda contain? Well, it contains six individual soda cans and a plastic holder to tie them together. These items are typically sold as a single unit that comes in a single package and could even contain a discounted price for purchasing a six pack over purchasing these items as individual cans of soda. This is the same setup if you would like to combine six items that are all different into a holiday or a gift package. Maybe you're combining six different plants for a Mother's Day package, or you're combining a few pieces of office furniture into a work at home station package. The combinations here are completely up to the up to your company, and this can cover anything that your marketing department could imagine. So let's walk through how you create this sort of setup in Business Central. First, we go to the assembly orders. We need to denote what item we want to create. Then we go to the assembly bomb for this order. In the upper left, you can see that we are creating the six pack item. We then list each item that the six pack will contain. You can see in the line section that I've added a type equal to item. Then I have selected the sprite can and I have added the quantity we need in order to complete one six pack. So in the quantity per field, we enter six cans of Sprite. I also need to add in a plastic holder that holds all the items together. <clears throat> so in the quantity per field, we only need one of these holders. 
Once this bomb has been set up, you will not have to set it up again to be used in the future. Then let's go to the assembly order and see how the math works out to get us what we need. Again, in the upper left, you can see the item we are producing. It is a Sprite six pack. In the general section, we have selected that we intend to create two six packs in total. In the line section, you can see the same layout that we set up in the bomb. We require, we require six cans of Sprite and one plastic six pack holder for each six pack that we want to create. Since we intend to make two six packs, the assembly order calls out what quantity we need to consume in order to complete the two six packs. So in this example, we need 12 cans of Sprite and two plastic holders. A dollar value can be added to the six pack item so that the consumer can save a little bit when purchasing six pack of soda. If you were combining multiple items into a gift basket for the holidays, you'd follow these same steps. You'd create an item for a holiday pack, create an assembly bomb that contains all the items for the holiday pack. You'd add the quantity required to create one holiday pack. You would be good at this point to actually go ahead and start assembling the holiday pack. Remember, the final item can contain the cost of all the items in total, or you could give a discount on the holiday pack if required. What's the reason for the second type of bomb? We want to assemble 10 items into a package that will be tracked in the system, sold, and shipped as individual finished goods. So, what does this 10 pack of drill bits contain? 10 individual drill bit, bits and a display case to be put on a retail shelf that holds these items. Typically, these tend to be smaller items. These items can then be sold individually at a standard unit price. These items do not fall into a category where you would give a discount as they are sold individually by the retailer. So for the second type of assembly order, let's walk through how you create this setup in Business Central. First, we go to the assembly order. Again, we need to denote what item we want to create. Then we go to the assembly bomb for this order. In the upper left, you can see that we are creating the drill bit 10 pack. We then list the item that this 10 pack will contain. You can see in the line section that I've added a type equal to item, then I've selected the drill bit. This is set up a bit differently from the first one because for every finished drill bit quantity, we will need to add the same amount of drill bits. So for this, we only put in a quantity of one drill bit. Then I have to take the display case and divide it by the number that the display, display case holds. So I divide one by 10 and get 0 0.1 for a quantity of the display case. This will make a little more sense once we look at the assembly order. So in the assembly order, you can see how the math works out to get us what we need. Again, in the upper left, you can see the item we are producing is a drill bit 10 pack. In the general section, we enter the number of finished items that we want to produce. Since these will be sold as individual finished goods and not one 10 pack of finished goods, we have entered a quantity of 20. If you look at the line section, you can see the quantity per from the bomb coming in at one drill bit and 0 0.1 for the display case. In the quantity to consume column, we intend to consume 20 drill bits in two display cases. This will net us two finished display cases that both contain 10 finished drill bits in each. And this concludes our webinar on how to set up assembly bombs in Business Central. I hope that sharing this information will make it easier for you and your company to take full advantage of assembly orders in the future. And at this time, I'd like to turn it back over to Angie. All right, Patrick, thank you. 
If anybody has any questions, uh, now's the time to get them in so we can get them answered for you. Patrick, while we're waiting, um, is there anything that uh, you have come across in, in your uh, discussions with clients um, about this topic? You know, it typically comes up that most things fall into these two sorts of categories for setting up bill of materials for assembly orders. Um, assembly orders are also very useful for many other reasons that we haven't covered, unfortunately, in this webinar. Um, but if you're interested in some of those, please reach out and I can uh, explain some of that as well. Basically, I've, I've seen assembly orders used without bombs in many, many good ways in different companies. One important way is people, if they are lot tracking their items, they can actually combine a single item with lots of lots into a single sellable lot. It's kind of a routine that businesses use to clean up the remaining small lots at the end of a week or a month. But truth be told, that doesn't really require a bill of materials. So assembly orders are very useful in multiple ways. And we just basically covered how to set up the bill of materials properly here. But that's not the limit of assembly orders. Okay, thank you. Well, I don't see any questions that came through our questions panel. If anybody has any questions later, please feel free to reach out to Patrick or your Inovia customer engagement specialist, and we would be happy to uh, get those addressed. So I just want to thank everyone for attending our webinar. And if you're watching on demand, thank you for taking the time out to watch this. And also to let you know, we do have more events coming up and you can visit our events page on our website at innovia.com slash events. We have training workshops also. So we have a wide variety that are already scheduled and we do have some that are on request. So browse through that selection. I'm sure there is uh, a lot of different topics uh, that will fit your role for you and your team. And if you have not heard the latest Anovia Conversation podcast, we have a library of podcast episodes for you to listen to. And you can learn more on our podcast page, and that's novia.com slash podcast. Browse through those selections and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air. And we have our customer conference information on our website. You can visit our conference page at anovia.com slash conferences. The Anovia Customer Conference is a free event for you to attend. So check out our conference page to learn more and register for our event. And you can also register for Dy Dynamics Con Live. Both conferences are back to back at the same venue starting on May 21st in Scottsdale, Arizona. So register now so you don't miss out on these events. All right, well, thank you again, everyone for attending. Thank you, Patrick, for the presentation, and we look forward to seeing you soon on another Anovia webinar. Take care, everyone.